Hello and welcome back. So we are able to retrieve information from our API directly here. And we're also able to read. We're only able to read from one table. So what I want us to do is add a second one so that you can see how to do that. Then we can move on to clean this up a little bit. So here I'm going to copy what's inside the case department here. In fact, I just want to duplicate this whole part up to here. Control Shift D. And instead of department here, it's going to be employees. So we say employees like that. Okay. So if the case is employees, we're just going to change, change here. Departments to employees employee okay so now let's go and check the actual table to see what we need so this is the employees table and um, so we have imp number that's the id here that's all we really need to search for and so it's imp no so let's come back here and change that so it's imp no hopefully that is correct okay and so you see that it starts from 1001 up to however down there it goes so what i will do is uh instead of concatenating a number like we did with this this is a pure number so what we will do instead is we're just going to say id is equal to 1000 plus id 1000 plus id so once we add that then uh, so we just make sure that we cast this as an integer for example so we'll say int like that if this was a um a decimal number you'd say float if it was a um i think that's about it so int there to make sure that this is a number even though it's a string it will be cast as a string and added to that and then we can have this here going on and from employees from employees so let's try this and test it okay so everything is set up there i'll go back here and department table is going to be employees employees and then i will say um and uh what were we using previously so let's say department id okay so employees so and do employees and then we say and i don't want to retrieve everything so I'll say and id is equal to one so enter and i don't get any results so if i go to the row data here you see this is what i get and also one thing i forgot to mention is that we do have headers here and we can see what the headers are this is uh what is going on here these be the headers oh looky there i made a mistake here on charset let me change that real quick sorry about that this should be equal to not the full colon sorry so char set is equal to, not that it will change anything anyway. So there we go. Headers, yes. Row data, we just have an empty uh, data set there. So to fix your problem, usually what you need to do is just uh, check the, the query. Here, it's definitely the query with the problem. So we have to figure that out. So what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see here, select tool from employees where empno is equal to ID. So most likely here, what's happening is that the ID is not correct. So what I will do is just do a var dump uh, ID like so. Now, the only problem is uh, we are expecting JSON. So this might not be what we are looking for, but let me just try it anyway. So syntax error, you see that problem there. And that's because we are outputting something that really isn't JSON at this point. Where is that? Right here. So we must lose this header uh, for now while we are debugging. 
so we can see exactly what the result is. So there we go. Int, uh, yeah, 1001. What about that? Oh, that's the output. Sorry about that. So int 1001, so which is correct. If I come to employee here, I do have, actually, that's the problem. There's two zeros there and there's three zeros there. So great, at least now I know what the problem is. So too few zeros over here, because if I add this, this becomes a one, so we get two zeros. So let's add one more zero there, so that we have three zeros in between. So I don't think we need this far dump anymore, and we can go back to our cool JSON. So back here, refresh the page. We go. So we do have a record <coughs> being returned. This is record number one. If I change that to two, I get record number two. Okay, so everything seems to be working just fine. Nice. So the only thing we need to do now, now as I have done here, for example, if you had different tables, you would just continue to add exactly what's here and continue with that. So you just make provisions to make sure that whatever ID is sent will match what you are expecting in the table. And if you find that uh, one of these is difficult, maybe the ID is just too difficult to, to deal with. Let's see one that may be a problem. Let's see, salary is here. Okay, so we have salary ID, employee number. Eh, this looks uh, pretty standard as well. So it doesn't look like there'll be a problem. But what you could do is you could replace the IDs if you wanted just to suit your needs. Okay, so now that we are at this point, uh, there's just a little bit of a problem. So the problem number one is that we are using this echo here. So the problem is we are echoing things everywhere. And this is never good because we need uh, a better structured system. Instead of echoing things everywhere, we are supposed to just collect our data and then finally echo it at the end here. That's more organized, I think. And then the problem here is we can't simply exit from here. Look at this, we're using too much code here because there's also this else, there's another else there, and so on and so forth. So what would be nice is to have a return key instead. So for example, if, um, let's say if I could do return here, now return is normally used in a function and it will exit the function. So it gives us a way to exit the function without having to go down here, which means I won't need this else statement like that. I would just remove it and put the echo here, which means if it goes through this, I can just tell it to return here and it will never get here. So then I don't need the else statement, but here, this would be a disaster because it will echo this and then it will continue running until it finds that. So this is why I like to use functions instead of just running things in the open like this. Because with a function, you have a way to exit the function. The moment you get what you need from it, you can just escape. So that would be good. But what would be better is if we use a class instead. Okay, so this is problem number one. Problem number two is that in our URL, we are using query strings like this, question marks, index.php. This doesn't look very good. It's not really as good as this, where you just do a slash uh, posts, for example, and then slash one, like so, right? This is much cooler. So we may want to do something like this. So let's convert our system to have these clean URLs instead then once we are done with that and we are done with the class we can upload it and give it a test run with our own uh, our own system and see if it will run okay great so at this point i want to what i want to do let's change the url so we don't need to include index.php and that's very easy to do now there's a third problem unfortunately so what i did here was uh, inside my, uh, I think this is the wrong thing I did here. Let me close this folder. 
open the correct one, which is just API. The mistake I made is I created my API in the website folder here, and this is just the mistake. It's supposed to be in the API, and my API is empty if you check that. So not good at all. So let's swap these folders real quick. So I'm just going to open the containing folder for the index page, and I'm just going to get everything that's here. Our API index page is empty, so no, no worries there. I'm just going to cut everything from here, go to API and go outside here and to API and paste. So I will replace the index page. Since it's just an empty page, that's okay. So now my website is empty because uh, that's how it should be. Uh, let me close one of these, so wait before I close it. So let me close these files here. Great. So now what I need, uh, so I've just swapped these two. Let me just add one more uh, index page to my website in readiness <clears throat> for when we want to read from our API. I'll just say index.php and save it there. That's all good. So now our API is over here. Now what I want to do is inside our API there, I want to add an HT access file so we can change how Apache uh, reads our files. So if I now go back here, uh, this is asking me to save, I will say no. Cancel that. Okay, so this is the code that we need. So just copy everything that you see here. Don't miss a single uh, character because it's going to fail. So what's happening here is that we're telling uh, Apache to rewrite, to do a rewrite, and then the condition for a rewrite is if if you find a file, an existing file, just ignore the rewrite. If it's a directory that exists, just retrieve it as is. But if it doesn't match any of that, then ignore the index page, get everything, uh, and pretend that we've opened the index page and shove everything into a variable called URL. So this is the variable uh, we are getting from. We're just saying get the query string and shove it in the URL like this. So just copy as it is, copy this text. So let's go to our, um, our API in the folder for the API where the index page is, just create a new file and paste this data. So it should be like this. Click save and then save it as .ht access, like that. So ht a double c e double s. So dot, don't put a file name, just .ht access and save. And we can forget about this file. We're done for the day. So let's come back here to see if we have missed anything. Now, remember that we've changed from website to API. So just rename uh, this website here to API and everything else should work the same. So you see, we're still able to read our data using the query strings like this, which is cool. Yeah, this is all cool. But at the same time, we have told it to get the entire query string and shove it inside a get variable called URL. This is what we did right here. We told it to use a get variable called URL and put the query string there like this. So we're pretending this is the link every time. So in other words, what we are saying is no matter what the user types here, we are always accessing the index page, whether they write index.php or not, whatever they write here, we are simply accessing the index page. So we can use this. Now, if I do this, just on the, I change the URL and just type, uh, let's say for example, departments like that. Okay, I just type slash departments, enter. So I still get the index page here, as you can see. So it doesn't really matter what I type in the URL like this, press enter. I still get the index page. Now, to know that I'm getting the index page here, we're just going to have to uh, let's go to the index page right there. Let me remove the header for
for now and let me just echo something here i'll say echo index page yes like so just so we know we are on the index page so i'll come back here and refresh and you see we are on the index page good uh, don't mind the brackets there they're part of the echoing i'm talking about here and then what I need now is just to print out what is inside the get variable. So print out what is inside the global get like that. And you will see that inside the global get, oops, what am I doing? Okay, so you see that the query string is now here inside this URL variable. So whatever I type here, let me just type departments like so. So you'll see it reflected here. Now, if I say department slash one, then I'm getting record number one from departments. Okay, so you see there's departments there's slash one, like so. Very nice, yes. So now we can get this and utilize it the way we want. At least now we have a clean URL that is acceptable here. Then we just need to parse this information and use it. So let's do that in the next video.